Howdy, partners. Welcome to Discard and Draw. Oh, jeez. Sorry I'm late. Gosh. I, what? Steel, I, I told you to wear an Indian costume for this, sh sh this shoot, this video. Oh, no. I got you. Hold on a second. Welcome to the Quickie Mart. Would you like a Slurpee? Oh. What? You said Indian. We're going to get so many emails about this. Hey everybody, welcome to Discard and Draw. I'm Steel, this is my brother Tank, and today we're reviewing Tiny Epic Westerns. This is a brand spanking new game. Yep. Tank, tell me about this game. This game is one part poker, two parts worker placement. And it's all Western. And a little bit of gunplay in it too. You know what? You had me at poker. Let's open it up and take a look. So this is a basic setup for two players. This game plays two to four players. Uh, with fewer than four players, you're going to use... A setup's a little different. Uh, a couple of these mats are double-sided to show one side with one of the four colors that a player would use, and the other side shows it with just, just a regular... Like, there's a little bit of that color in it, but it's mostly just normal colored. So for fewer than... Four players, you're going to flip over these. I mean, yeah, you're going to flip over the mats because uh, with fewer players, you're going to have fewer spots to place people on. So that's why they have the double-sided boards. The boards that are not used are going to get an additional building placed in what's called the porch slot for other players to use because normally that spot is where players will be putting the buildings they buy and since you're playing with fewer than four, they fill in these spots so that the players still have uh, porch spots available to them throughout the game, even though there's not a full set of four players. There are two decks of cards in this game. The red deck is all poker cards from numbers one to five, and there are four different kinds of suits. There is the... Uh, I don't know, bull... Cow skull. Cow skull, there you go. Pretty much. The uh, teepees, mm -hmm. the sh uh, horseshoe, mm -hmm. and the cowboy hat. And I think it's a 10-gallon hat. It. You know what? It just might be. <laughs> and each of those have different ranks um, that you beat. Because in this game, like Tank said, you're playing poker. Yes. Which I really enjoy that part. The other deck, the blue deck, is your building cards. Now at the start of the game you're going to set up your board here with all these different buildings and each board except for the town hall is going to get a building which is going to be available for players to purchase. Now in addition, if you have fewer than four players you're also, like I said, going to set up a building on each unused player board in the porch slot so that players can use that building's ability. If the building is bought from one of the player tiles, when you replace the building, you will not directly replace the building as you would with any of the other tiles. You will take the porch building and move that down to be purchasable and replace the porch building from the building deck. At the beginning of the game, each player will choose a boss card. Each boss card has its own ability. Mm -hmm. Other than that, they're pretty much just the same. Mm -hmm. On the back of each boss card is a player aid that has round summary to tell you what each phase does, 
It has iconography on it to tell you what the icons are. And it also has a poker hand and suit rankings on it so you know... Which suits beat which. Which suits beat which. And which, and if you're not familiar with the rules of poker, it'll tell you what hands beat what beat which hands. Which hands are higher. Exactly. If you haven't played poker, you probably should play poker before you try this game. So each player, in addition to their boss card, is going to get three meeples in their chosen color, which are going to go on their boss card. There's spots for them on your boss card. Those are your workers. They're also You're also going to get one of each of these little uh, wooden trackers uh, to track the three different resources in this game. This game has three different resources you're going to be using to buy stuff. Uh, one of them is this little gun barrel thing here. This is Force. You got a Sheriff Star. It says Law on it. That is your law, ironically. It's a good concept. And this one, which looks like a little coin, is, you guessed it, money! Now, these are actually called influence markers, so this is not pure resources. This is more like a esoteric representation of your influence in these various areas of the Western world. You can only get a maximum of six of each of these resources. The game also comes with a couple of dice shaped like bullets. These are six-sided dice. Uh, they set it up so that it does the numbers don't run one through six. They're they're opposite. One and six are on opposite sides. Two and five are on opposite sides, and three and four are on opposite sides. And they roll pretty well too. Actually, they they're weighted very well. They roll a little bit better than you would think. Yeah. And if you are one of the lucky people who backed a Kickstarter on this, yes, this was a Kickstarter game, you'll get two extra of these bullet dice so that each color has their own dice. And the game also has this little uh, dealer button, uh, which is used to denote the first player. At the beginning of each round, whoever is the dealer will deal out poker cards around town. Face up. Face up. And then one face down for... The house. The house. The house always wins. Each player is also going to get two poker cards. They're going to pick one to keep. And discard face down the other one. So the next phase is where you're going to place your workers. And starting with the dealer and going around the table, each person's going to place one of their workers until everyone's placed all their workers. And there are different spots on this wagon wheel board to put your workers. You can place them in the porch slots. Even if they don't have a building there, you can still put them there. Any... any Unused player boards are going to have a building in them, though, that you can use. The boards that are player boards are going to have an additional spot that you can put your worker. Actually, technically, it's kind of like two spots. Uh, because you can pick two sides, one of the two sides, to play your worker on. One side is gives you an immediate benefit. The other side only gives you something should you win the tile. Your third worker, which is laying face down on your boss card, only becomes available if you don't purchase a card during the buying round. Yes. And then you can use that worker on the next turn. Yes, on the next round. The next round you can use three workers and instead of two. Uh, but it only for that one round. Right. He'll go back face down after that round and you'll have to again not purchase a building right. to get him back. Although there are some cards that will allow you to use them as well, including one of the bosses you can actually spend resources to make that worker available with. If somebody else has put their worker on a space that you really want, you can go, take your worker, and try to get it by having a shootout. We're dueling. And what you do... Western style. Western style. 
And what you do is you take your bullet and you throw it as hard as you can at... No, 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 you don't do that. You, you roll it. Yeah. That was a pretty good... Wow. Wow, we both got ones. That was awful. <laughs> but normally... Normally when that happens, the attacker... When there's a tie, the attacker is considered to be losing. The attacker is always losing in a tie. Which, yes. I don't know if that makes sense, but it, that's the way it is. Yes. So in a tie like this, the attacker is losing. But you can re-roll. And the attacker can spend force, a force resource, mm -hmm. to re-roll his dice. Mm -hmm. The defender can spend a law resource to roll their dice. If and he's if he's losing. Mm -hmm. And if all else fails, your last resort, you can flip your poker card early and use whatever your number value is to add to your dice roll. Yep. If you do use your poker card in a duel, though, you may not use it in any subsequent duels during that round. Once it's flipped, you can't use it again, basically. It's a one-time thing. Mm -hmm. So use it wisely. So whoever wins the shootout, attacker or defender, is going to get the wanted card. And this is a neat thing. This card is going to get passed around during the course of the game, depending on how many shootouts you have. Each time someone wins a shootout, they get the wanted card from whoever had it last. At the beginning of the game, no one's going to have it. Now, if you, are, if you have the wanted card during phase three, at the beginning of phase three, you get one resource of your choice. At the end of the game, this is going to give whoever has it two extra points. And if you back this game on Kickstarter like I did, you get this neat little clear wanted card that you can stick on your... You can lay over your player board and then you can see your character's face on the wanted card. So once all your workers are placed... Everyone's going to flip their poker card over, if they haven't already. And the house is going to flip their card over. And starting from the right of the town hall and going around, you're going to resolve basically a hand of poker to determine who wins that tile. If you're alone on a tile, you're basically going to play against the house. So the two cards on either side of the tile plus your card are going to make up your poker hand, and the two cards on either side of the tile, and the house card is going to make up the house's hand. Whoever has the better hand wins the tile. If the house wins, basically you just don't get anything. Should you win, though, you'll win any of the tile poker bonus resources for that tile. If more than one player is on a tile, then you're going to play only against each other, not against the house at all. And again, you're going to use the two cards on either side of the tile and your card to determine who has the best poker hand. Now, in addition to all of that, you can actually modify your poker cards by playing on these spaces on the sheriff's office. These spaces can raise or lower your suit or your number value for your poker card to try and give you a better hand for the tiles that you're trying to capture. The last tile to be resolved is the town hall tile. Each player will play poker at the town hall. Whoever wins determines who buys buildings first. Yep. And also, the player who wins gets to move one of these three wooden icons up one space on this little track. On the town hall. Yep. And once each spot on this track has one wooden icon on it, the game is over. Which is six rounds and the game ends. Although, the game can also end if the building deck runs out of cards and you need to draw more cards from it. Then the game ends prematurely. So, in the order determined by who won at the town hall, players are going to take turns buying the buildings that are available. Now, you can only buy buildings that are on tiles that you have workers on. With the exception of the sheriff's office, there's one space you can place on the sheriff's office, which will let you buy 
one building of the remaining buildings once everyone's bought during this phase. So it gives you one last chance to buy something. Each building's cost is on the porch of the building, essentially. And you're going to pay some combination of force, law, and or money to purchase a building. When you purchase a building, you're going to slide it under the porch slot on your player board. And then that building becomes available for anyone to use in future rounds. If you already have a building on your player board and you buy a new one, the new one is going to become the building for your porch slot. So you're going to place it in front of all the other buildings you've bought. Uh, however, you will leave the top part of the building visible because that is where your victory points and also the icons for these tiles are going to be. So it's easy for you to know how many you have of each of these three and how many victory points you have and stuff. So to get ready for the next round, you're going to replace your buildings that have been bought uh, with new cards from the building deck. And like I said, player boards that are not being used by their players will have their porch slot card moved up and a new card drawn to replace their porch slot card. All the poker cards are collected. The dealer button is passed to the next player. That player is the dealer, shuffles up the cards, deals them out, and gets ready for the next round. So at the end of the game, you're going to count up the points on the buildings that you've purchased. You're going to add points. Whoever, Basically, whoever has the most of each of these icons is going to get points based on where these icons are on the town hall board. You get points for being first and second uh, for the number of... Because each of your buildings has at least a couple, at least one of these icons on it. So whoever has the most total is going to get some bonus points for those. And the person with the wanted card adds an additional two points to their total. And whoever has the most points is the winner. Uh, if there is a tie, you first attempt to break that tie by whoever has the most buildings. And should you still be tied, it's whoever has the most icons total in all their buildings. If there's still a tie after that, then the game is just a tie game. Everyone wins. Yep. Yeah. Except for the losers. Except for the people who don't win. Yep. Yeah. So, Steel, what do you think of this game? You know what? I actually like this game. Yeah? I do. The one thing I really like about it is the poker aspect. Uh, I enjoy poker. Uh, I don't play it all too much. At least not lately. Yeah. But poker is fun. And I think it's really kind of neat how they added the poker element to the game. Like, you're playing poker, but it's not all about that. Right. And... It's very thematic. Yeah. It makes sense. Because that's, I guess, all you did back in the day. Play poker. <laughs> Some kind of card. Cards. Yeah. Um, there's... At least in the movies, there's a lot of gambling in the Western. Right. So. And, you know, the worker placement isn't uh, hard or confusing. No, it's not. And it's it's all straightforward, which is which is nice. You don't want something that's confusing that's just going to... The icons are easy to down. understand. Right. You're not... There's not a lot of confusing icons in the game. When you first were explaining all the rules, I was like, wow, this is kind of a lot. But then, as soon as you were done, everything kind of made sense. Yeah. And that's always... That, it's just, that, that was the same thing that we had when I taught you Race for the Galaxy. <laughs> yeah. That, that was... was the same thing that happened when I learned Race for the Galaxy. <laughs> I was like, I don't understand. And, oh, it all makes sense now. Yep. <laughs> yep. So when you first go through the rules, it kind of seems like a lot, but... Once you get going... The, it's really not. It's, it's really not. It's and then, not as much as it seems. Right. The pace so. is, is pretty good, I think. When you know what that. you're doing. Right. Yeah. Um, you can burn through a game pretty quickly. Um, it's it's a good game. This is a very solid game. I'm, I'm very happy I backed this on Kickstarter. Me too. And I love... Like I said, this is totally my favorite 
part of this game. I love this this the fact that they did this is just so cool and it's just it's very thematic and it it's awesome to get the wanted card and then put it over your guy and be like, Yeah, I'm wanted now. This this person here, not like generic outlaw picture here. It's like, yeah, hey, my guy. Generic masked man number one <laughs> is wanted. That's not me. And this is this is not a flimsy card either. This is no. a very thick plastic that they've used for this card. If you throw this at somebody, you could do some damage. Yeah. So they put a lot of effort. And actually, uh, that was a stretch goal. Another stretch goal was the screen printing on all these uh, wooden pieces. And on the dealer button, that was that was a stretch goal, the screen printing on that. Because originally, I think it was just a blank chip. Hmm. And then they got enough backers that they screen and they screen printed on these too. So they they put a lot into this game, and and they could because a lot of people backed it. Well, it's a good thing because everything they did seemed to be working out very well for them. Yeah, this, with this game, this and Gamelin always puts as much as they can into the into their games. Oh, yeah. and the other thing they did. Again, if you've seen our Tiny Epic Galaxies video, you'll know you'll know what's coming, but there's something in the cover there. This is the dice corral. The dice corral. For you to roll your your bullet dice. To throw in. your bullets in. And it's it's got that cool little thematic picture of two guys squaring off. Mm-hmm. Very western. Squaring off for the duel. So I just love I love everything that Gamelin does to put to make their games high qu as high quality as they can. Yeah, it definitely you can definitely tell that they care. They really do care about what they're what they're producing, and that's mm -hmm. that's always appreciated. You know, for people like us, mm -hmm. at least for me. Yeah, I enjoy it. Well, that's it for this episode of Discard and Draw. I'm Tank. This is my brother Steel, and oh no, we're under attack. Like our videos, subscribe to our channel, do what you gotta do, and hopefully we'll see you in the next review. There are two decks of cards in this game. One for that, 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 that. The other deck. <laughs> you just started laughing. Take. Take seven. Team. The other deck, the blue deck, are building cards. So suck it. What? That are available for purchase. And at the end of each round, I just love, I'm, no. The other deck, the blue deck, is your building cards. Now at the start of the game, you're going to set up, I... This blue deck is gonna <laughs> haunt us. I know, seriously. All right, let me try. The again. blue deck is filled with ghosts <laughs> that hate you. <laughs> On the back of each boss card, there is a player aid that tells you the round summary, all what the icons are stand for. <laughs> On the back of each boss card is a what was it called? Player. Player aid. Player aid. After all the poker is resolved. Is that okay to say? <laughs> After all the buildings have been resolved, everybody plays poker with the town hall. At the town hall. At the town hall. <laughs> so after that phase, uh, I'm going to do that again. <laughs> so after six rounds, you should have... That's... No. Okay, let me try again. Well, that's it for this episode of Discard and Draw. I'm Tank. This is my brother Steel, and oh no, we're under attack! Oh, dang it! Well, that's it for this episode of Discard and Draw. I'm Tang. This is my brother Steel, and oh no, we're under attack! Quick! I got my other cut. That did not go. That did not go smooth. And we're dead. We're gonna have a lot of outtakes for this video. <laughs>